study tonight is I have been asked as far as the street ministry. We've had several dealings with the police in the city of Daytona, which has been quiet for a while. And I've been asked, well, why don't you just give it up uh, if there's such a problem? And there's really no problem. As I deal with my lawyer, my lawyer deals with the city. We're looking at what the what this Constitution of the United States and the U.S. Supreme Court has said and ruled on street preaching. That every event that I have done, to the best of my known ability, I have been a law-abiding, proper citizen. And when in doubt, I will walk away. I will call my lawyer, show him the video, give him the information, and see what's up. But I've also said that if the Constitution of America, of the United States, was ripped up, shredded up, and given up, which I believe it will be. I believe in the near future the Lord tarries. Christians will be arrested, prison, goods confiscated. It's happened before. On the soil of America, the separatists, in places like Norwich, Connecticut, where I used to live, by the power of the Congregation Church, and by the power of the Anglican Church, Christians who were called separatists were in violation of the law of man, but not the law of God, and there's a difference. And when we open our Bibles to Romans 13, it says, Let every soul, Romans 13, 1, that saved or lost, be subject unto the higher powers. President, whether it be Democrat or Republican, mayor, governor, police, judge, father, teacher, boss, employer, subject, you are under their power for there is no power but of God the ex extreme highest authority there ever is is the Almighty God and the powers that be police fire husband mother president Republican or Democrat judge governor the powers that are ordained of God. You don't like the Democratic president we have? Well, that's tough because God put him in. God ordained that man. But we're not looking at that tonight. Whosoever, therefore, resists the power. Oh, he's not my president. I don't have to listen to the police. I don't have to listen to my mom or dad. I don't have to listen to my husband. I don't have to listen to my boss. Resistance the ordinance of God. God's order, God's law, God's statute is if there's somebody over you in authority and you rebel against that authority, you are resisting the power of God who ordained the power. You know, you talk about ordaining a minister. Well, God ordained the president. God ordained the mayor. God ordained the police. All this defund the police. All this is a rebellion act against God. For rulers, mom, dad, husband, Police, 
mayor, president, Democrat or Republican, king, queen, are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. If you're a law-abiding a citizen, you don't need to be terrified of the law. If the police drove up now and I saw two or three police officers walking up to my door and knock on my door, I'm not afraid. They may be asking questions. They may want to know something. Maybe they're checking to see if I had my shot. Wilt thou then not be afraid of power? As far as a law, unlawful criminal, I'm not afraid of that power. But I am to fear that power as much as I fear God. Do that which is good. You don't like him as a president? He's, still, he's the president. You don't like that speed limit sign? You're to obey the speed limit. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Listen, I have been told, I have, and I'm not boasting of myself, I have a good character standing with the Daytona Police Department. I have a good character standing with a lot of, lot of the people, not all, that are at the farmer's market. I have been told by the Daytona Police Department that I don't raise a ruckus. I am not rebellious. I properly back down the situation, go about checking it out. You know, I call my lawyer. And then I come back and do what I'm supposed to do. Rightfully and legally. For he is a minister of God. You got that? The President of the United States is a minister of God. You see lights for the green, we're getting a thunderstorm. The Democrat Biden president, and I'm neither Democrat or Republican, I don't vote. But that Democrat, Republican, uh, re Democrat or Republican president, whether it was Donald Trump and now President Biden, whether you like it or not, they are a minister of God as much as the pastor of a church. And they're ordained, verse 1. And they're put there for our good. We say they don't do right. Well, okay. They're going to have to give account to God, not you. If the president, the police, the judge, the mayor, the governor is ordained into a minister's office by God, and if they misuse that office for good, they'll have to give an account to God. But if thou do that which is evil, you break the law. You are rebellious. Be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. See that sword? Capital punishment. If you are worthy of a crime to be put to death, the government has that ordained minister rights of God to put a criminal to death. I don't care what the Catholic Church say. I don't care what the humanists say. I don't care what man says. I say what God says. For he is the minister again of God. President Biden is a minister of God. Ordained. And again, I'm not Republican and I'm not Democrat. I don't vote, I preach. A revenger to execute, execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So if you break the law, you are not to complain about a speeding ticket, a parking ticket, uh, a fine, a summons, a jail term, or even death. 
Now, if the government does not do that and allow criminals to do a part in criminal acts, they will be held accountable. Wherefore ye, Paul writing to Christians, must needs be subject. Not only for wrath, the, the speeding ticket, the parking ticket, the fines, the imprisonment, but also for conscience sake. Listen, when I'm at the street ministry at the farmer's market and I see the cops walking up to me, I'm not afraid. I'm just like, oh no, here we go again. I'm too loud. They don't like it. And I've had some times where the cops come walking up to me and it's not about me. <laughs> we had one time they were looking for a criminal, a suspect, and they gave me a picture and we see him. And a couple times they come, how you doing? Good, good to see you. <laughs> but conscious means when you do see the police, you're not going to be in anxiety for all the past crimes. When that blue and red and, and lights flash behind your car, oh no, it's not that I've been going 5, 10 miles, 20 miles over the speed limit. For this cause, pay ye tribute also, that's taxes, you're to pay your taxes. Now there's a group of people called the church and the ministers that don't pay their taxes. That's another study. For they are God's ministers, number three, attending continually upon the very thing. So God has ordained and put ministers in charge of people in a country, in a land. And if those people in the power and authority do not do their job, they're going to be held accountable to God. And if they do their job, and you as a Christian break the law, or a non-Christian breaks the law, they got rights, they got rights. Not if you're a law-breaking citizen. Not if you broke the law. Your rights have been discarded. All right, Genesis. Genesis chapter 9. Verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. So, in the time of Noah now, up to the law and in the law, and during the church age, it is a crime to murder. He said, well, Stein, why didn't you go to Exodus? Why didn't you go? Because the person we're looking at is not under the law. But it is a crime. Murder. And we know thou shalt not kill. Exodus. Chapter 1. Exodus one fifteen. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. <coughs> The name of the one was Sapphira, and the name of the other Pua. And he said to them, When you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon their stools, the birth position, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. So the king, the power of the government, says, If that baby is a son, as that woman is giving birth, you're to kill that son. Now, I know abortion is the baby in the womb. Here's, as the woman's giving birth and the baby comes out and you can see the sexual orientation 
of that child, if it has a penis, it's a son, it's a male, and the government says, kill that child. Okay, Romans 13 says, obey the powers that be. Genesis chapter 9, God says, you don't murder. Verse 17, Exodus 1. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king commanded them and saved the men children alive. They disrespected the government because the government dis disrespected the word of God. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to him, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men child alive? And the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively, and are delivered ere be the midwives come unto them. In other words, they give birth and they hide the children. Therefore God dwelt well with the midwives, the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, he made them houses. But they disrespected the government. But the government disrespected the word of God. Going over the speed limit is not disrespecting the word of God. Parking in a in a fire zone or a handicapped parking and you don't have a handicapped tag is not disobeying the word of God. Okay. And God rewarded them for the fear of God, which contradicted the government. But the government contradicted the word of God. Exodus 20. Exodus 20 verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I thought you were going to do not, thou shalt not kill. That's verse 13. Verse 16 saying that you should not lie. Joshua 2. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out a Shittim, two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house. It's not a clean possession. Named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither that tonight of the children of Israel search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come unto thee, which are entered into thy house, for they be come to search out the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said, they came, There came men unto me, but I wish not where they were. I don't know where they are. She lied about the two Jewish men that Joshua sent out. And her life is preserved by God, by Joshua. And she lied. And the law said, Thou shalt not lie. And by faith, Rahab perished not with them that believed not. Okay? She lied to protect two Jewish men, the children of God. She blessed the children of 
Joshua of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God blessed her. God said, I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. That if a lie is to protect a life of a child of God, a Jewish person, or a Christian, there seems to be a relaxation where an outright lie lie. Mark 16. Mark 16, 15. He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is Jesus Christ. Acts 4, 18. Verse 17. But that is spread no further among the people, let it straightway threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered said, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot speak the things which we, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So the, the government tells Peter and John, we don't want no more preaching in the name of Jesus. Shut up. That's what they told me, they told the beach. We don't want to hear about Jesus. But Jesus said, preach the gospel. The government said not to preach it. Peter and John answered them respectfully, politely, they're not out of character, they're not being rude, they're not being crude, but shall we just hearken to God, or we shall we hearken to man? What's your answer? And when we are dealing with the law, we are to be respectful, kind, considerate, and not idiots, not angry, not wicked. Now the government said, don't preach the name of Jesus. God said, preach Jesus. Peter and John respectfully said, hey, we're going to obey God. Chapter 5. 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them into common prison. They're preaching the word of God. Verse 27. And when they brought them in, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them saying, Did not we command you that you should not teach in this name, Jesus? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and tend to bring this man, Jesus, blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. No disrespecting, no cussing. You know, Peter cussed, denying Jesus. They didn't call for lawyers. They didn't get rude. They didn't get crude. Excuse me, sirs. We understood what you said. But we're going to do what God told us to do because God overrides what you said. Now, 
we obey the laws and the, and the ordinances and the statutes that you have. Which, if they do not violate the scripture. And there have been some Christians in some churches, they have violated the law where the law in their county said, you cannot cut trees down unless we give you permission. And the Christian and the preacher, you're not going to tell me what to do with my property. I'm going to cut that tree down. And then they get into a legal trouble. Now, there's nothing in the Bible about cutting a tree down or not cutting a tree down. If they come up with an ordinance that you cannot cut that tree down without a permit, you need a permit. If the government says you need to get two shots for COVID-19, if you need to get three shots for COVID-19, you need to get two shots. You need to get three shots. Nowhere in the scriptures does God say you do not get a COVID-19 shot. Hopefully this week I'll be getting my second shot. If the government says the speed limit is 25 miles per hour, you do not do 26 miles per hour. If the government says you need an ID to do something, you need an ID to do something. Plain and simple. But if the government tells you something... That is contrary to the word of God. We want you to kill. As of this order right now, and this happened in China, we want you to kill your baby. God says, thou shalt not kill. We're not going to do it. If the Constitution was shredded tomorrow, and disregarded and nullified Saturday morning I would hopefully rightfully depending on my health and the weather I will show up at the farmers market to preach the gospel and they say well no longer are you under the Constitution no longer you are under the Supreme Court we are going to arrest you well, I'm going to obey God. God says, preach the gospel. And you need to arrest me. Because look at chapter 5, verse 40. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles, beat them. And commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. When you are going to obey God, Because the government is contrary to God. The government says one thing and God says another. And you're going to stand to God. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If I preach the gospel. I may go to jail. I may be beaten. That's the consequences. That's suffering. It's COVID-19. The government says you can't meet. And the Bible says Christians are meet together in assembly. And the government says no. The Christians say yes. The government says no. 
The Bible says yes. And you may go to jail. You may have confiscation, confiscation of property. You may lose your property. You may be fined. But God said come together. Now you may have to go underground church. See, you don't have to be an idiot. You still got to be proper. But there are men's laws, ordinances, and statutes that do not go contrary to God in His Word. Now, it goes contrary to our beliefs, our ways. That red lights are a hindrance to where I'm going. But as a Christian or as a non-Christian, you run that red light and you see red, blue flashing lights, you are guilty. And you know you are guilty and you go to court and you try to fight for your rights and all that. God is on the side of the government, not you. If you are guilty and fight in your guiltiness, God is not on your side. Romans 13. And then to live right by God and to anger men which is not being taught in the churches today church history has shown that Christians who live right contrary to what religion contrary to what the government says to what God said they have been imprisoned they have been tortured they have been killed. They've lost property. They lost livestock. And I told you, I, I, I've done the study. As far as Norwich, Connecticut, I've got pictures, and I show them every once in a while, of the Norwich Green. And there's a spot where there was a whipping post where Christians and other people not say were whipped and Christians were whipped for their faith and it's sorry that Satan has in that spot today a sewer co cover with the letter S to mark sewer to the world Christian blood is sewer and to God it's crowned. So my orders to you is if it does not violate what God says, if it does not violate the Bible, no matter and regardless what you think and how you feel, if you are guilty, you are guilty, don't you dare fight it. You are to obey the laws and the, the ordinance and the statutes of where you live. And there may come a time that the laws, the statutes, and the commands, and the legislation, it may contrary to what God and the Bible says. You're to do what God says. And sometimes you may take a beating or lose your life or lose your property. But God will deal with the government and the officials when they are judged. 
and God will deal with you when you are judged. To purposely break the law, no. As far as preaching at the farmer's market right now, today, I am backed by the Supreme Court and the United States Constitution of the, of the United States. And the people at the farmer's market can't stand it. The rights of the land say, I have the right to preach Jesus Christ. That right could be taken away any day, any time. Will I hold to that day? Am I going to do that which is right by God? Or am I going to do that which is right by man? Hopefully I will do that which is right by God. We are to live our life right by God and right by man as long as it aligns with the King James 1611 Bible.